The Apocrypha is a small collection of books. Well, there's a lot of things in the Apocrypha that don't line up consistently with other parts of the Bible. It absolutely has no place in the Bible. Theologians and, and councils and uh, uh, various ones throughout history have recognized that and they said these do not match the unity of the rest of Scripture. Of course there were many writings that were swirling around. Many of them were obviously fraudulent. Um, some of those were, were, were dabbled with for some time and then over time the church came to its senses and that well, we, want, we want to reject some of those. It's okay, I think, to admit that theologians wrestled with some of the books of Scripture. Sure. Martin sure. Luther had a hard Luther. time with a couple of books of the Bible. So when Martin Luther took out the Apocrypha, which he, and this is the key, it didn't like he just took it out. He moved it to a section. And he moved it to a section not to get rid of it but because he himself was undecided as to which books were canon. And he did believe some. So Martin Luther writes that he thought 1st Maccabees was canon. He write definitively, no different than another. He also thought, you know, Esther might not be canon. Um, he thought that uh, Tobit and Judith could very well and should be canon. He just had some question marks on it. And then like there were other books he thought are good reading. And then there were other books he just thought that they're, they're, they're horrible. I, I don't care, I'm not even gonna include them in my German Bible, I'm getting rid of them. Yeah. So that was the, the phenomenon actually for most Christians. Like Calvin thought that the book of Baruch was scripture and part of Jeremiah, but he, he rejected other works. Other Christians, same thing, pick and choose. We like this, we like that. Luther's goal in creating the Apocrypha section was really in the hopes that at some point when Christians now understood the agreed on totality of the normal kind of base canon, they could then evaluate better what to think of these other books. Hmm. The reality historically is it just never happened. No one ever did go ahead and do that. Everyone just kept individually making their own decisions. The word Bible means books. We have 66 books in the Bible. Now there are some books that some want to say should be in the Bible. In some Bibles, in Catholic Bibles, you find the books of the Apocrypha. And there you'll get books such as Maccabees, 1st and 2nd Maccabees, Tobit, Jasher, Bell and the Dragon, um, addition to the book of Esther, a 13th chapter in the book of Daniel. There's a reason they're not in most Bibles. They don't belong in the Bible. Statistically, two thirds of the world's Christians are not Protestant. Wow, okay. Right, That's so the majority of Christians are Catholics or Eastern Orthodox or other varieties of Orthodox mm. faith, which means that the majority of Bibles, and if you want to back this up, you can look at like CIA statistics and, and other sites that list, um, you know, the statistics of the world's faith uh, and specifically Christian. And so what that means is the majority of Christians in the world will call Tobit scripture and canon and deuterocanon than a minority one third who would be like Tobit what? So huh. it's actually the opposite. It's because, and this is why I said mm -hmm. it's more common for Australia, mm -hmm. perhaps, or or, Toronto, or Canada and America. When you have a Protestant, you know, kind of dominated culture, it's, yeah. oh, you go to Barnes and Noble and, and, you know, maybe you'll look for that Bible that has that, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas in other countries, it would be far more common that the average Bible, uh, what their version of an NIV would be or something, that's going to have those books and not just in an apocrypha section it's going to be in the old testament intermixed without any designation that it's different or that mm -hmm. what its history was so it's protestants who funny enough live in these sort of bubbles now now they didn't yep. used to but yeah. now and kind of think to themselves oh those weird books and it's <laughs> like well no actually you're the one who probably has the onus to be trying to defend why you don't read those books because mm -hmm. you went to a global bible study they're going to start, you know, opening up Tobit. I a lot of times there's people who are all about the Apocrypha or some other eccentric writings, but they kind of ignore the Bible. They're not as excited about the, the actual books that we do have confirmed versus those that we don't have confirmed. And so sometimes people are just always on this edge of periphery periphery of excitement and, a, and eccentric ideas. And we have to be careful about that. Read the Bible, uh, and, 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 it, and it contains the words of life, and don't put as much emphasis on these other things as much as we do the Word of God. Yes, as Adventists, having come that many generations without them, now the reality would be, well, why would we need them? We've got all our doctrines, we've got the truth, 
we've read all the books um, that we have and we're doing quite fine without these extras. So perhaps God never intended them to, to stick around anyway. You know, that sort of argument. Absolutely. And what I would say in response to that is that's fine. So let's do the same with Obadiah. Let's go ahead and, and get rid of that. Uh, you know, we, I mean, really just like everyone has a canon within the camp. Everyone, whether they consciously know it or not. Who, what do we spend our time preaching on? If we're Adventists, and at least the Adventist churches I grew up in that were quite conservative, the inner canon was primarily, if nothing else, Daniel Revelation. Yeah. It might include the Gospel of John. Hmm. The synoptics probably to some degree were like apocryphal oral traditions that might be drawn on occasionally to supplement hmm. what you needed about John or something. And hmm. then are there sermons on Obadiah or, or any of these others to like, uh, it's certain texts like you think that are minority texts, not really deeply. There's no like mm -hmm. super, I don't remember, pa I don't remember sermon series on Nahum, you know, and, and his emphasis mm -hmm. on the fall of Assyria, right? Like, okay, if we didn't have those books, there would literally be no difference in terms right. of services I went through. You would never, that that churchgoer wouldn't even know it was there, like that it existed mm -hmm. because you never heard someone talk about it. So it's kind of similar to in the New Testament, right? Think about like how many sermons have you heard on Third John, <laughs> right? Like, I, it's the short, it's short, it <laughs> almost no one, it's just sitting there, right? Like how many yeah. sermons do you hear um, on Jude, not, and here's the thing, Jude, not in respect to what Jude is quoting, right? Mm. Like when Jude gets quoted, it's as though he's just an intermediary, like, Oh, he talks about this apocryphal story about Moses coming back from the dead. We need that. Okay, he mentions Enoch's prophecy. We need that. But like everything mm -hmm. else in that short letter is just like, yeah. uh, I mean, it's such, a <laughs> such a simple message. Titus. I don't hear many sermons on Titus. Timothy's <laughs> letters will get the attention. Titus just falls by the wayside. Um, so things like that kind of tell you that if our perspective is just, well, we're doing good, Right. Well, then, OK, well, then you have a sort of utilitarian view of the canon, a sort of mm. if we're using it actively and it benefits us, then it deserves canonicity. If that's the case, then certainly that's going to disagree with, uh, you know, say, John Peckham's model or talking about mm. a intrinsic canon, uh, the idea that there's something intrinsic to scripture that makes it canon or and that we're recognizing uh, its canonicity. That would go out the window. Then it would be a utilitarian model. I can use it and I do, thus it's scripture. And that would then also mean that something that's currently apocryphal could just as well be canonical for you if suddenly you find out that it provides greater utility uh, than the other. So I, I would say that's a, a not good kind of approach to the canon. Mm -hmm. Knowing the sort of debated nature of some of these extra canonical books and just with everything you've said, I think it's really made me reevaluate my personal approach to scripture because I I just want to give a quick shout out over to Adventists today and thank them for being the sponsors of this video.